Hi, I'm Jed Carroll with Whitetail Hall of Farm. Hatchery building, quite possibly the dustiest place on earth. You will have to excuse my voice. Uh, it's that time of the year. It's 85 degrees today in northern Florida. The spring is sprung, and I'm in, again the dustiest place around. These these chicks make a mess, so my voice is not so good, and I'm a little congested. So I just want to talk about our Emus 101 video here that we're doing. We're going to start off talking about incubation and take you all the way through to dealing with the adults and collecting eggs. We are a small emu farm. We have five males, five females. In two separate pastures, there are four girls and four boys in one and one girl and one boy in the other one. So only because of the emus not getting along with each other. Before we really get started, I want to tell you your best resource that you can find other than this video, and this is a far better resource, is the Emu Farmer's Handbook. And let's see if we can get you some numbers here too. Printed in 1992. And I don't see any ISDN numbers or anything, but you'll find that this is, this is definitely the most inclusive book about the subject. This comes from a commercial farming standpoint, but it has everything to do with health, raising. I mean, you, you, you come up with a problem. I just saw a vent prolapse. Thank God we've never had that, but if I do, this is where I will go look because I don't know that yet. I haven't run into that yet. We get a lot of people that'll call us with issues. One couple of years ago, we had somebody that kept calling us with goopy eye issues. And I went straight to this book, looked it up, found the fix and the chicks are fine. So that by the way, comes from not keeping your brooder really, really clean. And it happens <laughs> as we'll talk, <coughs> talk about in a moment. Okay. Right now we're standing in our incubator. Emu chicks are incubated at 97.5 degrees and about 35% humidity. Um, as I've told y'all before, sometimes we let that go up a little bit while they're hatching. It's gonna go up a little bit while they're hatching. Right now we can't quite get it down. I'm about ready to crank up the air conditioner in here because we're sitting at 53%. I have to keep opening the door to ventilate this incubator. We do have some incubators that are specifically designed for emus that have more vents in the back. We've never had to use them, but we're about ready to. We talked in a previous video about how we assemble our emu trays from GQF. Um, it'll be the same thing if you have a dicky. You want this piece, this mesh piece right here to where it'll hold three rows of eggs. And holding three rows of eggs, it should hold one, two, three, four, five deep. So you get about 15 per tray, about 45. Uh, total in the incubator. Depending, some people have big six, eight, nine hundred gram eggs and they're not going to fit quite as many. So there's three rows in this incubator. They turn. It definitely helps to come in here and manually turn them, manually manipulate, get some airflow in the incubator as often as possible. Do not hesitate to open the door. Do it. It's much better to have them lose a little heat than to not get good oxygen flow. We write down the date that we're setting the egg and put it in the incubator. And somewhere in the neighborhood of about 45, 46 days, we recommend taking them down out of the turning trays and putting them down here. Do we, <laughs> that one's rolling on its own right now. We definitely occasionally find somebody who will, who will hatch a little early on that front. So this year has been a crazy year. Everybody's saying it's the girl year. We've only gotten one boy back in our DNA sampling. Speaking of which, the next thing that we do as far as our DNA samples, um, we use Avian Biotech, also known as Amgen, Amgen, something like that. Maybe Ben can put us a link in the description to Avian Biotech, but they have a brand new facility here in Tallahassee, Florida. For us, we go drop them off. The way we do that, their eggshell, and a piece of the membrane, and this is all they need. In fact, they don't even need this much, but want a little blood, a little goop, a little nasty on it. And they will provide you with sample cards, sample envelopes. You take the sample envelope, put the sample inside. I just put emu and then the leg band number that I have on the bird, put them together, record it on the sheet, 
put down my credit card number and they take care of the rest from there. We then go in a day or two to our handy tablet and get our test results back. As you see this year, let's see, this year's birds are down through here, this female. So from here on up, you notice they're all females except for one male who left to go to his forever home yesterday. And we have these two which are pending. Those are retests from these two. Somehow they did not get a result. I've never had that happen ever. I don't have any other no results. So we got two no results. They're at no charge redoing them and we'll find out. The strange thing is this other female that I took in on the same day, I got results the same day. So I'm wondering if we don't have something really weird genetically going on with number 20 and 21. Ben was just getting himself acquainted with number 20 who's quite the um, interesting bird, likes to bite I guess. Brooding. This is an example of a clean brooder. <laughs> Look at it real carefully because it won't be that way for very long. We use a heat plate. Um, these are available from Tractor Supply, Premier One. These are the Premier One Comfort Chick units. We really prefer them. The only problem you'll ever have with one is mainly in storage. You will snap the legs off. They're almost made to break off. I'm not really sure why, but they're really cheap, a couple of bucks, and you can replace them. These are on back order right now. I highly suggest when you order them, don't bother getting the top unless you're going to use them for chicks as well. Emus are gonna get on them no matter what. You will come in and find an emu on top at some point in time, but it is nice and warm underneath. No heat lamp, nothing to burn your place down. We put a nice heavy water dish here. If Ben wants to show you the one in the other one, the crock there, that's a little heavier. They're still gonna step in them. I bet you probably just heard one step in them. They're gonna step in them and knock them over either way. These are nice and heavy. The heavier the water bowl, the less they're gonna knock them over and make a big mess for you. We're also using Kraut Creek Chick Starter, which is, here's a, a bit of it here. A nice mix. It's a non-GMO made up in Ohio. We have a local distributor in South Georgia that we get it from. A lot of people ask, can I put wood chips down? Absolutely not. They'll eat them, they'll play in them, they'll do everything that they should not do in them. They'll slip on them. You will definitely wind up with twisted legs and all sorts of bad things happening. My advice is if you can find a local <clears throat> dollar type store, this nice heavy woven carpet with the rubber backing, we can typically get 10 or 20 uses out of this stuff. Another version is if you Ben, if you can show them this a little bit over here this stuff here this is kind of a dollar tree thing they're also a buck they have a nice texture to them but they soil those once maybe twice and they're done so they start to fall apart either way it's a buck and done and you know you might get a couple of days out of one I showed you one that's that's that one hasn't been cleaned in two days it's time it was it was next in rotation these guys are a little bigger and they start pooping big time they we kind of call them little miniature cows <laughs> so they start leaving a lots of poop everywhere once they start eating pretty good it's so warm here right now that we don't really worry about the heater in these guys in fact i need to raise their heater up these guys are taller than the heater so if you need to get these higher so as your birds get bigger and this needs to be taller and taller pvc pipe three quarter inch pvc pipe cut them all to the same length you can make a nice piece out of it but remember eventually it's going to become a springboard for them to jump out of so you need to go to the larger size brooders or larger size tubs to keep them in once they're about three or four weeks old you're going to want to have a really large enclosure for them then you've got to start kind of treating them like puppies a lot of people will use little puppy containment systems and things like that again always carpet underneath don't put vinyl nothing slippery you can put vinyl or something underneath it to keep water from getting down through. Definitely carpet on the top surface. Be very, very wary of anything they could slip on. Just look at it and think, will they slip? So there's a lot of sob stories and you'll start seeing them on all the Facebook groups pretty soon of people who, who uh, let their chicks run around on a slick floor. And unfortunately, they usually don't uh, make it back from that problem. So, so there's a tendon here. If this little girl will pop right here, right here. It runs in a channel on the back of that leg right there, right down the middle. And if they run around, they'll slip, that'll pop out, and getting it back in is very, very difficult, if not impossible. You'll hear about $3,000 surgeries and GoFundMes and everything else to try to fix people's EB chicks. It's very sad, but there is rarely a time when they will recover from that. I will show you a male that we have that has survived that. It has done pretty well, but it's not the, it's not the norm. Oh, and while we're here, we'll see. This is number 22, and number 22 is a girl. You see, it, she's got the pink on her leg. 
she is a belle. You notice we got a couple of chicks in here. The chicks are really only in here to show them how to eat and drink and they've done a good job and I think the chicks uh, haven't taught them how to stay out of their water. I just cleaned that water right before we started making the video. So it only takes them a couple seconds to jump right in and clean their feet off. So emus love water. Another important factor is collecting eggs and storage of eggs. A lot of people ask how long are they good for? They're definitely viable for longer than a chicken egg. You know, if, if an egg's two weeks old, I don't get too worked up. I would definitely always rather set fresh eggs than two week old eggs. So we try to get them into the incubator as quickly as possible. If you want to gather a few up so that you're incubating six together, something like that, and you're only getting one or two a day or one or two every couple of days, if you want to let them go a week, just keep turning them just like daddy would do. They, they kind of bury them and keep turning them over and moving them around every day and checking on them. You know, just play with your egg. You want to keep them at about 55 degrees, which is what this place stays during the winter time, but not right now. It's 85 degrees if you can't tell. In fact, it might even be a little warmer than that and about 80% humidity in here. So it's, it's rather warm out. It's unseasonably warm here in Florida. All right, now I'm in our goat barn, which is going to be our emu barn for a short period of time this year, especially if we keep getting females. Right now I'm working on getting this place ready to go. I'll just show you what we're going to do. I'm digging down right to the ground level here, getting all the old poop and everything out from birthing the babies of goats and all that kind of good stuff. We're going to get this down, fill it with sand, and we're going to pour it with concrete. So we're going to have a concrete pad in here that'll be nice and smooth with a broom finish on top. Smooth, but it'll have a lot of grip. We're going to leave it flat concrete. We may put a few stall mats on top just for ease of cleaning. May do a little sealer on top. May put a couple more boards around the bottom. This is where we're going to house our juvenile emus up to the point of probably about two months. Once they get past two months, they're going to go out into another space, um, which I'll probably show you in just a second. This will be the intermediate. Now we do have electricity in this barn, so it's not a big deal to keep them warm. Keep water in here. We've got water in here, the whole nine yards. So we will have our juvenile emus in here. Now, hopefully after everybody sees this video, everybody will be calling us for a couple of females. So females usually go pretty well, but males are typically going to be your best pets. And that's what we recommend for most people who are buying them just as pets. If you want to get into the emu breeding business, or you just want some beautiful big green eggs, then you're probably going to need females. And you know, there's another little bit of a controversial subject is will females lay without a male present? It's been our experience. No. Will somebody, you know, come back and say, oh, absolutely. I have a female that lays and I have no male. Yeah, I guess they, at some point in time in their life, they needed to be exposed to a male. At, at least that's the way we understand it. You know, we don't have any proof either way, but we're pretty darn sure that our females that have never been bred have never laid. This year, I think everybody has been bred and everybody has laid judging from the number of eggs that we've gotten so I, I'll never put that one to rest but you know for everybody who for everybody who said agrees with me there'll be somebody who doesn't agree with me so that that one will have to stay up for grabs again even if you have a nice concrete surf needs to be non-slip absolutely something with some traction if you have something already with a slick concrete surface then put down some traction paint you know or some strips something you do not want to deal with leg issues on your baby emus all right y'all i'm kind of interjecting here into the video again just wanted to show you what we finally came up with since jed was just talking about putting down concrete and everything we didn't get time to do that but we came up with kind of a solution here for the emus as they're juveniles and growing up a little bit faster so they can't live in those tubs for very long they kind of outgrow it really fast so this was our solution instead of getting the concrete put down so we got this entire area here leveled off pretty nicely and underneath this green turf we've got stall mat we put down two stall mats here and we put down the green turf i think you can buy this sort of stuff at home depot i wasn't with them when they bought it but it keeps them from slipping like dad's been talking about a lot there you gotta watch the legs always watch their legs make sure they don't end up with leg issues always keep them on a solid grippy surface so we've just got a dog bowl here that's probably going to need some new water so i'll do that while i'm out here because they really dirty it up fast and we've just got a rubber bowl with their uh, crumble in it we used a sawhorse here to hold up their sweeter heater they can get under this a lot better than they can those small premier ones when they get to this height you can see that most of these guys guys are quite a bit taller than your average little babies these are all about a month old or so and when they get to this height they really shouldn't be in a tub anymore they're just way too big their heads are up over the tub most of the time at this point to keep them from going up under this gate here and out these bars sticking their head through we just put some small sheets of plywood here and stapled it onto the side of the barn and to keep the big emus from coming in here and creating a mess and starting stuff with them we just put this curtain here 
so that nobody else can really get to them and cause an issue if any of them are hanging out here near the gate. So I'll give it back to dad. Just wanted to interject and show you all what we came up with. So this is Frodo and we're going to show you what a bad leg looks like. He's not the worst in the world. And he's what, three or four years old, I guess now. So if you notice his leg sticks out to the side, I call him Kung Fu Emu. If you freak him out, he's going to kick high. He's got a very swollen up knee. It's probably always going to stay that way. It's probably full of scar tissue. He can run faster than anyone else out here in this pasture. He regularly likes to, likes to kind of schmooze up to the girls and the girls don't always want to be schmoozed up to. And for right now, he's just not going to walk for us, I guess, but maybe we can convince him he needs to walk somewhere. That's your YouTube stardom is getting to your head here, buddy. He usually doesn't like to be petted either. So that's a little, there he goes. Now he's getting into his usual, there we go. So sand, if you notice that our nice Florida sugar sand is a little tough for him to walk in. Mud is very tough for him to walk in. He makes it around and he's happy. As long as he is happy, he's got a home here. Doesn't seem to be in any kind of pain. He'll lay with his leg out to the side. He'll just lay and chill all day in the sun and he seems to enjoy his life here in Florida. Way to go, y'all. You made it to the end of part one. Just want to thank everybody for watching the video and sticking around. Hearing about our incubation process and eggs and how we take care of the little ones as they grow into juveniles. In the next part, part two, we're going to talk about fencing and adult. And then part three, we're going to talk a little bit about their feed, diet, some other things to look out for. This is going to be a three-part series, so be sure to watch all three parts. And on part three, we're going to explain how our giveaway to get two emu eggs is going to work. So be sure to watch part two and part three and keep up with how we're going to do that awesome giveaway if you're new to the channel be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel that really helps us produce new content and you'll get to see when we do other cool stuff with the emus as well as all the other critters on the farm and some other tractor work and fun stuff like that so we got all sorts of other content be sure to hit that bell button that way you can stay in the loop on how you can win those emu eggs in part two and part three thanks for watching whitetail hollow farms